Remember the dot-com bubble burst of 2000 and the Great Recession of 2008? The market meltdowns that left investors reeling, portfolios shrinking, and dreams deferred? For instance, during the infamous 1929 crash, the market plummeted by nearly 90% over three years. And the 2008 financial crisis saw the S&P 500 drop by approximately 57% from its peak in 2007 to its trough in 2009. Well, buckle up, because the man who saw these crashes coming like a runway freight train is back with a doozy of a prediction. John Hussman, the Cassandra of Wall Street, the analyst whose crystal ball seems perpetually set to market apocalypse, is warning of a potential 42 to 65% nosedive for the S&P 500. And this time, it's not just some doomsday prepper whispering in the wind. Hussman's track record screams for attention. Think Jerome Powell's dovish whispers are lulling the market into a false sense of security? Think again. Hussman sees the Fed's seemingly friendly stance as a sugar-coated Trojan horse, luring investors deeper into a bubble about to burst. Is this just another case of a perma bear crying wolf? Or is Hussman's chilling prophecy about to become reality? In this video, we'll dissect the evidence, weigh the warnings, and explore what a potential crash could mean for your portfolio. John Hussman, who's known for foreseeing past economic challenges, is expressing doubt about the positive outlook for Federal Reserve rate cuts in 2024. He thinks that rather than leading to a happy market situation, these moves might extend the current bubble and eventually make a future crash even more severe. Hussman's concern is tied to his special way of looking at the market, where he compares the total value of stocks to the actual economic output of the companies involved. Right now, this ratio is at historically high levels. In simpler terms, it means that the market prices of stocks are quite high compared to what the companies are actually producing. According to Hussman, this situation is similar to what happened before the crashes in 1929 and 2000. For context, the Federal Reserve raised interest rates six times between 1999 and 2000, preceding the dot-com bubble burst. Similarly, between 2004 and 2006, the Fed's consistent rate hikes preceded the 2008 financial crisis. In his opinion, the market is already too expensive, and if the Federal Reserve adds more support, it might make this overpriced situation even worse. This, he believes, could lead to a crash that's more serious than anything we've experienced before. Investors, on the other hand, appear to hold a contrasting viewpoint. Fueled by the anticipation of reduced interest rates, they foresee an ideal scenario where market expansion continues without interruption. They believe that the Federal Reserve's move toward a more accommodative stance will act as essential support for a prolonged bull market. However, Hussman is cautioning that this optimism is perilously misplaced. He argues that the lowering of rates will encourage additional speculation and inflate asset prices, ultimately paving the way for a more destructive crash when the bubble inevitably bursts. The disparity between Hussman's careful pessimism and the enthusiasm of investors highlights the fundamental conflict between short-term gains and long-term stability. While reduced rates may temporarily lift stock prices, Hussman presents a bleak picture of the eventual consequences. He warns that artificially inflating asset values without addressing the underlying economic issues is comparable to postponing a problem. It might bring momentarily relief, but the eventual crash will be even more dramatic when it occurs. While John Hussman presents a gloomy outlook for the market, emphasizing soaring valuations and bubbles influenced by the Federal Reserve, some analysts, such as Mike Wilson, provide a contrasting view by focusing on investor sentiment and market internals. Hussman places significant emphasis on his unique measure of market internals, commonly known as market breadth. This metric essentially gauges the involvement of individual stocks in a market rally. According to him, the current state of market internals suggests a tepid appetite for risk among investors. Hussman's argument revolves around the idea that, despite headline indices like the S&P 500 appearing inflated, a closer examination reveals that only a few mega-cap stocks are propelling the market gains. He contends that the majority of smaller-cap and mid-cap stocks are trailing, 
indicating a lack of widespread confidence in the overall direction of the market. This viewpoint sharply differs from the observations made by analysts such as Mike Wilson. Wilson directs attention to recent enhancements in market breadth indicators, offering a more positive outlook on investor sentiment. He highlights the robust performance of the equal weighed S&P 500 as proof of wider involvement in the market rally. Unlike the conventional S&P 500, this version of the index assigns equal importance to each stock, not favoring larger companies like Alphabet or Tesla. The positive showing of the equal weighted index suggests that even smaller companies are experiencing upward momentum, indicating a more widespread enthusiasm among investors. Wilson also emphasizes the growing percentage of S&P 500 stocks trading above their 200-day moving average as another indication of improving sentiment. This metric suggests that an increasing number of stocks are surpassing their long-term trend line, signaling a shift towards bullishness among market participants. In 2021, for example, the equal-weighted S&P 500 outperformed the market cap-weighted index, suggesting broader market participation beyond just the tech giants. The disagreement between Hussman's cautious narrative of limited market participation and Wilson's optimism based on improving breadth indicators underscores the inherent complexity of assessing investor sentiment. While headline indices may conceal underlying weaknesses, a closer examination of individual stock performance and broader participation metrics can present a different perspective. Ultimately, understanding the true sentiment of the market involves carefully considering multiple viewpoints and indicators, steering clear of the pitfalls of relying solely on single metrics or overarching narratives. Now, turning our attention to the foreboding prediction by John Hussman, Renowned for his accurate warnings preceding major downturns, we encounter a stark outlook for the S&P 500. According to Hussman, the present market condition not only reflects a high degree of overvaluation, but also urgently requires a correction to align with normal expected returns. Backing his claim with numbers, Hussman relies on a set of valuation metrics as his primary tool. His preferred metric, the ratio of market capitalization to gross value added for non-financial stocks currently stands at staggering levels, surpassing those seen before the crashes of 1929 and 2000. This metric essentially measures the total market worth of companies against their actual economic output. To put it simply, it's like paying an excessively high price for a used car. The cost doesn't accurately represent the underlying value. However, an intriguing twist emerges in this narrative. Despite the sounding alarm from Hussman, investor sentiment tells a different story. While his indication of low market breadth implies a cautious attitude towards risk, with individual stocks trailing behind main indices, he also recognizes a potent force opposing his bearish outlook, the fear of missing out, FOMO. Hussman's foresight was evident when he predicted the 2000 dot-com bubble and the 2008 financial crisis. Yet his bearish stance, post-2009, has been met with a robust market rally, showcasing the unpredictability of market dynamics. So, are we standing at the edge of a market downturn, or is Hussman raising a false alarm once more? This is the pivotal question lingering in the air. His track record commands attention, but the counteracting force of FOMO, along with seemingly positive market internals from other analysts, introduces a layer of complexity. In essence, navigating this market terrain demands a careful balancing act, Investors must acknowledge the inherent risks highlighted by Hussman's valuation metrics while comprehending the psychological currents driving FOMO. A prudent mix of skepticism, coupled with thoughtful consideration of diverse viewpoints and indicators, holds the key to making well-informed decisions in these uncertain times. John Hussman, often regarded as the market's harbinger of doom, casts a substantial and pessimistic shadow over the optimistic outlook of Wall Street. With a history marked by accurate predictions of previous market crashes, Hussman's current forecast of a 42 to 65% S&P downturn holds significant weight. However, navigating the intricate realm of financial predictions necessitates a careful approach, one that weighs his bearish predictions against other market perspectives and the inherent uncertainty of future events. 
Hussman's arsenal is not comprised of mere intuitions and speculations, but rather of objective, factual data. His primary weapon? The ratio of market capitalization to gross value added for non-financial stocks. This metric, currently positioned at exceptionally high levels, presents an image of a market filled with euphoria, seemingly unaware of the edge of overvaluation. It's comparable to paying an exorbitant sum for a dilapidated structure. The price tag simply does not mirror the underlying reality. However, the market is not an undivided entity, influenced only by valuation ratios. Here enters the mysterious force of investor sentiment. While Hussman's market internals indicator reflects a cautious investor, reluctant to embrace risk, he also acknowledges a compelling counterforce, the fear of missing out, FOMO. This influential psychological mix propels investors back into the market, even when prudence calls for caution. It's akin to witnessing your friends profit from a hot stock tip, the temptation to join the excitement proving too irresistible. So, should we prepare for another market downturn, or is Hussman repeating the tale of the boy who cried wolf? Unfortunately, the answer remains veiled in the ever-shifting uncertainties. While his past accurate predictions command respect, they don't guarantee a crystal-clear vision of the future. The market is a complex entity, swayed by numerous factors beyond even the keenest analyst understanding. The key takeaway? Approach Hussman's analysis with an open mind, recognizing the weight of his data-driven forecasts, but acknowledging the limitations of any single viewpoint. Diversify your sources of information, heed other voices in the market, and most importantly, remain grounded in your own risk tolerance. The future of the market remains an enigma, one that necessitates a harmony of perspectives, not just the singular, albeit powerful, beat of a bearish drum. In recent years, the U.S. economy has shown resilience with a GDP growth rate averaging around 2-3% annually, and an unemployment rate consistently below 5% countering some of Hussman's more pessimistic views. That's it for today, and remember to subscribe to our channel if you found this content valuable. We'll see you in the next one.